How many of you have lost someone in your life due to a car accident? Okay. Be honest, how many of you guys text and drive? A lot of you. <laughs> well, I'm not going to lie, I used to text and drive as well until I was heading towards Sedona, I think would be, with my dad. And um, the car behind me was on his phone with a group of family members. So my dad told me to step aside, because I was learning how to drive for a distance. Mm -hmm. So I let the car pass by. <coughs> and then when I finally caught up to him, they had already got into a crack with another family. And the family that was behind me texting, they all died, and I saw very graphic images. So that's why I stopped. Texting and driving can be very serious and very dangerous. And I want all of us to think twice before we plot our phones again. How many of you guys Snapchat a favorite song while you're driving and you post it on Snapchat for everybody to know? So I saw a tweet on Snapchat on Twitter one day. It said if your Snapchat story is just one straight minute of you driving and singing along to a song, I'm showing your insurance company because I'm tired of it. So. Many car accidents happen every day, and they can lead to car accidents, death, or injured people. And it's not only you that get hurt when you're driving, you can also hurt an innocent driver as just driving. Um, a study shows that people are impaired when they drive on a cell phone as they are when they are driving intoxicated. So you're not paying attention to the road, so you can, it's like you're driving drunk, basically. You're not all there, you're looking at your phone, you're reading a text, you're calling somebody, you're texting someone. You could either get in a car accident or you could run into somebody like the picture above. Bill Hendricks is a writer from WebMD. He states that in 2007, 67% of people would text and drive and it shows that every year it goes up 4%. So that was, what, nine years ago? Around about nine years ago? So if you do the calculations, almost everybody texts and drives now. Many of you guys think that because it hasn't happened to you, you haven't gotten a car accident, nothing has happened to you, you still think you can text and drive. So when you're driving, you don't expect a car to get in front of you and then you hit them because you're not expecting the unexpected Um, this, my source number three is a DMV. It says when you're choosing to text and drive, you're threatening every single driver around you and placing more value on the text message than yourself and the other person. The DMV also states that if you, can, if you have the urge to check your phone, to pull off the road, park your car before you pull out your phone. So get in a parking lot if you really need to text that bad because you can either get into a car accident again, you can lose your life, someone else's life, you can get injured, or you can get a fine if you get caught by a police. Um, how many of you guys think five seconds is not a long time to look at your phone? Okay, so study shows that sending or reading a text takes your eyes off the road away for about five seconds, long enough to cover the whole football field. A football field is pretty long and anything can happen in five seconds. Not paying attention to the road. So to make a change, there really isn't a solution. It's always up to you whether you plan to stop texting and driving or not. Like again, I said you can pull off the road or you can simply put them away. I put a picture of a girl and a guy so you guys can put them away. So you don't have the urge to always look at it or put your phone on vibrate. If it's an emergency, then you can just pull off the road, honestly. And then, what will it take for you guys to stop texting and driving? Do you have to get in a bad accident? Do you need to occur a death situation? But wouldn't it be too late because you probably already died? So just put them away. If you have an iPhone, there is a new update where you can put your phone on Do Not Disturb. It will let the other person know that you are driving and once you get to a park location, you will call them back, you will text them back. So, 
I couldn't get the other side because there really isn't any justifications for you to text and drive. There was an excuse that bosses, they need to contact their co-workers or something, but you can honestly pull aside. And then 